Right, okay, so in today's video we're gonna have a look at completing the square and finding turning points. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes. We've got a few questions to have a look at and some for you to have a go at. Now I'm not gonna to do too much of an explanation as to why we do this the way we do, but more of just a, you know, how we actually go about getting the answer here for these type of questions. So I'll try and talk about little bits about it, but we're gonna have a look at this question to start with. So by completing the square, find the turning point for the graph with this equation here. Now completing the square, to actually do this, we have a look at this coefficient of x here. And we're going to put in, in completed square format looks like this. So we have x plus or minus a number squared and then something else after it. Now the number that goes in the bracket here is just half of this coefficient of x. So half of 8 is 4, it's positive, so we keep it as plus 4. Now the reason that we can um, we halve it there is because if we were to expand this bracket now, so x plus 4 in brackets squared, if we expand that, we can write it out as a double bracket. I, I won't actually do this beyond this first question. But if we expand that as a double bracket, we get x squared plus 4x plus 4x, which gives us 8x. And then 4 times 4 gives us 16. So it looks very, very similar to the one above, apart from it gives us plus, plus 16 here. And we don't actually want plus 16. We want actually plus 12, because we're just writing this in a different form. It's the same uh, equation here, but it's written in completed square form. So in order to make sure that we get plus 12 and not the plus 16 here, we would have to take away 4. Okay, in order to balance that out. So after this x plus 4 squared in brackets, we just put minus 4. And that there is completed square form. Okay, so all you've got to do, half the coefficient of x. Actually, what you can do is not even bother expanding the, the double bracket. You can just think, actually, well, I know that that's going to give me plus 16 at the end. And in order to get this plus 12 here that we want, we'd have to take away 4. So you stick a minus 4 on the end. So that's completing the square. To get the actual coordinates of the turning point, um, it's actually in our completed square form just there. So our x coordinate is right here. And just like when you are solving with, uh, when you're factorizing and solving and you flip the sign, we do the same in this scenario. So the x coordinate is minus four, and the y coordinate is just this number here at the end, okay, with the symbol minus four, so it's minus four, minus four. There you go, and that'll be the coordinate of the turning point. Let's have a look at a few others though. You'll see some similarity now between these questions. Okay, so right, it says write this x squared minus 8x minus 4 in the form x minus a squared minus b, where a and b are integers. So it doesn't say complete the square, but that there is completed square form. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to complete the square. And then it says hence find the coordinates of the turning point for the graph with equation x squared minus 8x minus 4, the same one that's up there. So all we're going to do is do exactly the same thing, completing the square, and then find the turning point. So I'm going to do it from this one below but this time it's a minus eight there. So when I halve that, it'll just be minus four in the bracket. There we go, squared. Always in that form, so we've already got a there, a is gonna be four. Now, just thinking about obviously expanding this, the final multiplication we do in a double bracket will be negative four times negative four. That would give us 16. And we don't want the 16, we want that negative four there. So in order to get to negative four, we would have to subtract 20 to get to negative four. So it's minus 20 at the end there. So there we go, a is 4 and b is 20. Now, in order to write the turning point, we're going to take exactly the same approach. Look, we flip the sign for the minus 4, so our x coordinate is positive 4, and our y coordinate is just this number at the end, minus 20. There we go, and that's completing the square again. Right, one more to have a look at. So different wording again, it just says find the time turning point for the graph with this equation. So it doesn't say by completing the square, but that's the process that we're going to use. So let's have a look. The x coefficient is negative 2. So in this instance here, that becomes x minus 1 in the bracket, but squared. And when we expand this double bracket here, the number we would get would be positive 1. And we don't want positive 1, we want this plus 9 at the end, so we would have to add 8 to that in order to get 9. So we would have to put a plus 8 at the end here. There we go. And don't forget, you can just expand that double bracket if you want. You can do x minus 1, x minus 1, and then you'll get x squared minus 2x plus 1. And you just got to think, okay, what do we add to 1 to get to 9? That would be a plus 8, and that's where we get this plus 8 from. Okay, so you can always take it a little bit slower there. But again, the x-coordinate here, the flipped version of the negative 1, so positive 1, and the y-coordinate being the number at the end there, positive 8, so 8. And that is completing the square. Okay, here's some for you to have a go at. So pause the video there, have a go at these four, complete the square and find the turning point, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so the first one here, we get x plus 3 in the bracket squared. Expanding that would give us 9, and we want 7, so minus 2 there. And the coordinates of the turning point is minus 3, minus 2. 
There we go. Onto the one below. Uh, halving the, the negative 8 gives us x minus 4 squared. If we expand that, we'd get positive 16. And we want 9, so we're going to have to take away 7. So our coordinate will be positive 4 and negative 7. Top right, um, that would be x minus 5 in brackets squared. That would give us 25. We want negative 4, so we're going to have to take away 29. And that gives us our turning point coordinate of 5 and negative 29. The very last one here, halving that would give us x plus 1. Expanding that would give us plus 1. We want negative 13, so take away 14. And again, our coordinate there will be, oh, not x, but there we go, minus 1 and minus 14. Right, there we go. Let's have a look at something slightly different. Okay, so this question here, and you'll notice that a similar sort of question, but we've got an odd number in the middle here. So if we take the same approach, so opening our bracket, we'd get x minus, and half of that is negative 1.5. I'm going to leave it as a fraction. Uh, it's okay if we have a calculator, but I'm just going to write it as 3 over 2. Okay, 3 divided by 2, 1.5, and have that squared. Now taking the same approach, if I was to expand this, the multiplication we'd get in our double bracket would be negative 3 over 2 multiplied by negative 3 over 2, that last number. And let's see what that actually gets us. The two negatives cancel each other out, so 3 times 3 is 9, 2 times 2 is 4, and it would give us 9 quarters. Now we want to get from 9 quarters back to 6. So we could turn this into a mixed number. 4 goes into 9 twice, so it's 2 and a quarter. So we want to get from 2 and a quarter to 6, so we just have to work that out. So what's that? An extra 3 and 3 quarters. So we would have to add 3 and 3 quarters. We could just leave it as a mixed number like that, 3 and 3 quarters. There we go. So we, obviously we've got a slightly different turning point here with fractions and or potentially decimals. You could do it with decimals as well, particularly if you have having a calculator. That's absolutely fine to do. I've just assumed this is non-calculator, but if you've got a calculator, that's nice and easy, isn't it? You just do 6 take away 2.25 and write it as 3.75. But our coordinates here, we'd have positive 3 over 2, uh, flipping the sign again. So you could write it as 1.5 or as a fraction. I'm just going to write, I'll tell you what, we'll write it as a decimal, 1.5, and positive 3.75 just there, and 3.75. There we go, and that's the coordinate of the turning point. Obviously, we could just leave that as a fraction there. We could just write 3 over 2, and 3 and 3 quarters. Be a bit weird to have improper fractions and mixed numbers there. Maybe turn that into one and a half and three and three quarters instead. But there we go, that's the coordinate of the turning point. Uh, moving on to our final question here before you have a go. And do make sure you make some notes on this one because it is different, it does step up a gear here. Um, and you're, these are the kind of questions you're gonna have a go at in a sec. So you'd have probably noticed we've got a coefficient bigger than one on the x squared here. So we've got to take a little bit of a different approach here. I need to factorize this so that I've just got a one x squared there to start with. Okay, so taking out a factor of two, we get two lots of x squared minus 5x plus 4. Brilliant. Now we've got something that we can actually complete the square for. So if I have a look at just this quadratic in here, that's what I'm going to complete the square for. I'm going to ignore that the 2's there for the moment. So following the same process as before, so just completing square for this, we get x minus 5 over 2 squared. And then we need to figure out what number is going to go at the end there. So figuring out what number goes at the end, let's have a look. Negative 5 over 2 times negative 5 over 2 would give us 25 over 4. And if we simplify that, what does that become? That's 20, 24, so it's 6 and a quarter. Now we don't want 6 and a quarter. We want eight. At, oh, sorry, we want 4 at the end there. And in order to get to 4, we'd have to take away 2 and a quarter, so minus 2 and a quarter. There you go, minus 2 and a quarter. Now we need to reintroduce this 2. So this 2 was there. Now that 2 doesn't just disappear. Actually, this whole thing has to be multiplied by 2. So I'm going to bring that back in, and now we have to multiply that 2 out. So it's the same process. We have to just have to factorise the 2 out, and now we put the 2 back in. So if we times both of these by 2, we have 2 lots of this bracket, 2 lots of x minus 5 over 2 squared, and 2 lots of this negative 2 and a quarter, and 2 times negative 2 and a quarter, is negative two, uh, sorry, four and a half, or four and two quarters. There you go, negative four and a half. So that's that, that, that's that times that two back out. Now we just need to finish this off to find the turning point. So our turning point is still this number here for our x coordinate, so positive five over two. So five over two. And then the y coordinate is still just this one at the end here, so negative four and a half. There we go, and there's our coordinates of the turning point. 
So you've got to have a look at this question here again. Uh, just rewatch it again if you're not sure. So factorize the two out in the first step or whatever it is, then complete the square just like normal in the second step, but then just reintroduce this two back in and then multiply both things by two for your final step. And again, just reading the turning point just like we did before. So a few extra steps there. We've got the fractions involved, so it is a little bit trickier, but there we go. Here's, here's two questions to have a go at. Okay, so have a go at these two questions. Pause the video there and I'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, let's have a look then. So taking two out here, we have two lots of x squared minus three x plus two. Completing the square for what's in the middle, the middle there, we get x minus three over two squared. That, when we multiply it, gives us nine over four, which is two and a quarter. Okay, we don't want two and a quarter, we want two. So we would have to take away a quarter there, so minus a quarter. Now, bringing that two back in, so two lots of all of that, and let's expand that out. So we get two lots of x minus three over two squared, take away two lots of a quarter, which is negative a half, there we go. So the coordinates of the turning point are positive three over two, so three over two, and negative a half. And there's the coordinates of our turning point for the first one. Moving on to the second one, let's have a look. So again, taking the two out, you get x squared plus five x minus one. Completing the square for that, we get x plus five over two squared. That would get, again give us this 25 over, over uh, four, which is six and a quarter again. We don't want six and a quarter, we want negative one, so we have to take away seven and a quarter there to get back to negative one. Bringing that two back in, there we go. So we have two lots of x plus five over two squared. Take away double seven and a quarter is 14 and a half, so minus 14 and a half. There we go. So the coordinates of our turning point, we've got negative five over two for the x coordinate inside the bracket there, and negative 14 and a half for the y coordinate, and that's that finish there. I'd probably I'd probably write them as uh, both as mixed numbers there, so negative two and negative two and a half for the x coordinate. But there we go. That's completing the square. Uh, these final two here obviously are quite tricky ones, um, but hopefully that was useful. Again, watch back through it and have another go if you're unsure on these uh, final ones. But there we go. If you uh, find that bit useful, please like, please comment, and please subscribe. And I will see you on the next one.